Once the Freedom Rides were stopped in Alabama, the students who had been sitting in and bonded in jail came to Alabama to keep things going. Our group that I went with on the Freedom Ride included my buddy to the end of his life, Stokely, yep. We flew from Washington to New Orleans. I think we got a touch of nonviolent training, you know, spent a night there and then bought train tickets and took the train from New Orleans to Jackson. The police at every station, there were crowds on a lot of the platforms, but they didn't let anybody on without a ticket and nobody got off unless that was where they were, their destination. So we just kept rolling and uh, got off in Jackson, came down the steps into the waiting room, white one I guess, and sat down, you know, as a group, Captain Ray, move on and move out. Do you all hear me? You gonna do it? You're under arrest. And uh, we took the paddy wagon down to the city jail. And what happened when I went to step out of the paddy wagon just really hit me, still amazes me. The policeman, it's a big step down out of the paddy wagon. He reached out to take my arm and help me down. We don't want a thing to happen to you children. Now, if I'd been black, this would not have happened. But it showed the basic decency under all, and it gave me faith that things were going to work out. Went to the city jail. I think we got our mug shot there. Had our little trial, which was just as pro forma as the arrest. Taken over to the county jail, and that got really crowded really fast. There were more Freedom Riders coming in. We were down to about three square feet of floor space per prisoner in the white women's cell, if you didn't count the area under the bunks. Well, of course, at night, some people slept under the bunks. One girl slept curled up in the shower, which dripped. Eventually, it was getting, after about two or three weeks, it was getting so crowded that, and more Freedom Riders were kept coming. They had to do something with us. They decided to take us up to Parchment. And I think the guys may have been taken first and put in sort of a dormitory style room, but you had no real communication with anybody else. They took us and put us on death row, one cell block on death row at Parchment. They took the regular the prisoners there and moved them elsewhere in the prison. And then that whole cell block was women. Now one cell was all white, the next was all black. They were sort of mixed up that way, but the cells were individually were racially segregated. The food was a lot better. It was a lot cleaner, in many ways more comfortable. We got showers. I, think, I was thinking it was once a week. Somebody said twice a week. And then every once a week, the rabbi came up from Jackson an amazing man, Rabbi Nussbaum, to pray with us. He would come, and the matron or whoever would say, if you want to pray with the rabbi, call out your cell number. Well, I'd always pray. You're not growing up in a Jewish neighborhood, and a man of cloth is a man of cloth. So I would go and call out my cell number, and he'd start off in Hebrew and just sort of lull the guards into oblivion, and then he'd start sneaking in the, the news, and switch back and forth between the news in English and the praying in Hebrew. And then he'd have a word with each of us individually within earshot of, and you know, if there's a message from home or we had something we want to tell our parents. And he would send them a form letter saying to keep this absolutely quiet because if it, the word gets out, I won't be able to do it anymore. Then, you know, visit and send the letters. We had quiet time. We had exercise time. Okay, jumping jacks. One, two, one, two. Um, you know, different exercise. Somebody was calling this out. Uh, if somebody had an expertise, they would give a lecture on that. Um, I think I did one on Gandhi, maybe. Um, one woman was a professor, a Greek professor, and she gave some history that way, but everybody did their thing. So we pretty well kept 
ourselves entertained. 